Hi, everybody. Dr. Kennedy here on a beautiful spring day. You know, the sun is chirping, the birds are shining, so I thought I'd get outside and teach this lesson on related rates. I can't stress enough how important it is to sketch. If they mention a sphere or they mention a triangle, whatever it is, sketch it. I guarantee it'll help. Step two is mapping the problem. Now, this is a term that I use when I'm teaching SATs as well. If, they're, if you're given a word problem, you want to write down all of the quantities that are known and unknown. And in calculus especially, it's important to keep track of what's a constant, what is a variable, what's a rate, What's an instant? There's a big difference between a constant and an instant. Rates of change are going to be d something dt, right? A rate of change is a slope, so it's change in something over change in time. It's a derivative. Constants are numbers, variables are letters, and instants are these special ones that are variables until you plug them in at the end after you relate the rates, which we're not up to yet. Here comes step three. Step three is to relate the quantities. What I mean by that is come up with one or two equations or however many equations you need to relate the quantities in the problem. They're usually a formula from geometry, like a squared plus b squared equals c squared, Pythagoras, or volume of a sphere, area of a triangle, area surface area of a cube, something like that. It'll be a geometric formula that you know that relates the quantities, or they'll give it to you. Here's step four, my favorite step. You're going to use calculus to relate the rates. So you're going to take the derivative of both sides of your equation or equations. The final step is to plug in the instance, the instantaneous data that you're given, and solve for whatever they're asking for. A good habit that I like to use is, while I'm mapping the problem, I like to remind myself what I'm trying to solve for and at what instant. So I tend to write a sentence that says, find blank when blank. Okay, now I'm going to make up a couple of examples, and then I'm going to do an actual AP problem from 2019. Stay tuned for that. Hey, what do ladders and lampposts have in common, besides Lin-Manuel Miranda and Mary Poppins Returns? Related rates, of course. This is a typical ladder problem in related rates. A 13-foot ladder is falling down a wall at a rate of 2 feet per second. Find how fast the bottom of the ladder moves away from the wall when it is five feet from the ground. Okay, so I'm going to follow my steps and I'm going to sketch this out. Now, when you have a ladder problem, you have a vertical wall and you have a horizontal ground, and then here's the ladder. This is a right triangle problem. So you're most likely going to have to use Pythagorean theorem or maybe one half base times height or maybe even a trig ratio. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so Katoa. Some formula associated with right triangles, right? So have those rattling around in your brain. And I'm going to label, I'm going to map out the problem now uh, by reading line by line and labeling every number that they give me, every quantity. So 13 feet, a 13-foot ladder, is that a variable? Is that a constant? Is that a rate? What is that, right? Well, the ladder, as far as we know, is not growing or shrinking throughout this problem. This is a constant. So I'm not going to give this a variable. I'm not going to say a, b, c for a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm going to call this 13, and that's it. Don't associate a variable with that ladder, okay? So the rate of change of the ladder, by the way, is zero. So if you do give this a variable and you take its derivative, its derivative is zero because it's not changing. It's a constant. But the simplest thing is label that with a number. Okay, now what? It's falling down the... Wall. So I like to show the motion, right? So it's coming down and this is going out. I might as well label this A and B. You could use X and Y. You could use G for ground and H for height. Whatever makes sense to you, you choose the letter, okay? Uh, the ladder is falling down the wall at a rate of two feet per second. So that's this. B is changing. So DBDT. DBDT is negative two feet per second. So a rate that's decreasing is a negative rate. Don't forget that. It's important. Fine. So here's my template. Find blank when blank. Find how fast the bottom moves. So they want me to find the rate of change of A, D, A, D, T. They want me to find a rate when it is 5 feet from the ground. So they're talking about B. So when B equals 5 feet. Okay? And this takes some practice. I've done a million bajillion of these. So if you haven't done a million bajillion, that process that I just went through might take a little longer, but practice will pay off. Okay, 
So now I'm on step three. Let's relate the quantities. What are my quantities? I have A, I have B, and I have this 13, right? What relates these? Well, I don't know anything about the angles other than that I have a right angle here. So I think Pythagoras is our best bet. A squared plus B squared equals, don't write C squared, 13 squared. And don't spend too many brain cells squaring 13. It doesn't matter. When you take the derivative, the derivative of any constant is zero, right? So I've related the quantities. Now let's relate the rates. Here comes calculus. The derivative of a squared is 2a times dA dt. So what did I just do there? I just used the chain rule, believe it or not, or you might recognize it as implicit differentiation, which basically is the chain rule. So since a is a function of time, it's changing over time, right? This quantity here, the distance between the wall and the bottom of the ladder is moving, it's changing. Uh, the derivative of something squared is 2 times something times the derivative of the something. Okay, so this is kind of like an inner function. So I'm using the chain rule. This is like a function squared. It's 2 times the function to the first power times the derivative of the inner, right? That's the chain rule. Probably the most important rule in calculus. I know I say that about everything, right? Now I'm going to do the same thing with b squared. b there, b squared. Plus, so the derivative of b squared, this is again, something squared, is 2 something to the first times db dt, the derivative of b with respect to time, equals the derivative of 13 squared is 0. So this is my equation that relates the rates. Okay, let me make some room and then we'll plug into this. So here's where we left off. I just transferred this equation up to here. Okay, now we're going to plug in the stuff that we were given and find what we want. So two blank, I'm going to create some blanks here. And let's see, what do we know and what do we want to find? So we want to find dA dt. So I'm going to leave that as dA dt. We were given that b equals 5. So now I can plug that in. Any instantaneous data gets plugged in after you do the calculus step. So b equals 5. Where does that go? Right here. db dt I should know also. Here it is. Negative 2. Uh, a is the only thing that's missing. I wasn't given a, but let me draw an instantaneous snapshot. Okay, this is kind of the general drawing. This is the instantaneous one. This is 13. Uh, a is what we don't know. And B at this moment is 5, right? So 5 blank 13. Now I could use the Pythagorean theorem. 5 squared plus B squared or A squared, whatever letter you want to use, equals 13 squared. Or I happen to know that this is a triple. 5, 12, 13 is a famous triple. So the missing side there is 12. Great, so everything was plugged in except for the quantity we're looking for. So let's solve. 24 dA dt minus 20 equals 0. I'm going to use some algebra, add the 20, divide by 24. So dA dt at that instant is 20 over 24, which is also 5 over 6 if you divide by 4. Yep, that's right. Now I have to put units. Since db dt was in feet per second, and this is the rate of change of a, dA dt, it's also going to be feet per second. So that would be my answer for that one. And also do a check to make sure that the sign makes sense. This came out to a positive rate of change. Does that make sense? Is a growing as this motion is taking place? And the answer is yes. If your sign doesn't match, then check what you plugged in at the beginning and make sure that the signs were correct.